We're going to look at some examples of this occultic iconography and symbolism that was used on that day. The most glaring example of which is in tarot. This is the tarot image known as the tower. It's a card that represents the end of an old way of things and the birth of a new way of things. It's the destruction of something that is old and worn down and the building of something new in its place. One thing is being cleared to make way for something to be put up in its place. Okay, So that's the tower. It is depicted as being struck by a bolt of lightning on fire with people toppling out of the windows. And that is exactly what we saw on the day of 9-11-2001. We saw towers that were struck by forces. They were on fire and people were leaping from the windows. So clearly the um, occultic symbology of this particular tower card is, was employed on that day. Whether this be totally by design or it be synchronicity, I'll leave that up to the, uh, the, per, uh, the, the, the uh, audience to decide. Um, but one of the main things we have to understand to understand how this ritual went into uh, effect is that two buildings did not uh, collapse in New York City. Three buildings came down on that day in New York City alone. Many people still do not know this or understand it amazingly because the main, mainstream media only showed the collapse of this building here uh, to the right only one time and never really showed it again unless you go on the internet and search for the video of the collapse of World Trade Center number 7. Uh, some people are still unaware that a third building came down at 5.20 p.m. on that day. So we have to understand first that not only the Twin Towers uh, collapsed into their own footprint, but so did Building 7, a 47-story steel, uh, concrete and steel reinforced building collapsed uh, into its own footprint in approximately six and a half seconds at 5.20 p.m. on 9-11-2001 when no plane had struck it. So. I'm not here to argue the physics of 9-11. I'm not here to even talk about any of the aspects of the how part of 9-11, the, the physics or the how it happened. I'm much more interested in using my time to discuss the why and the implications of the occultic symbology employed in what I consider a dark occult ritual, a ritual that embodied the modified Hegelian dialectic. So the first thing to understand is three towers came down, three pillars, if you will, came down on 9-11, not two. The first uh, occult system that I'm going to look at in relation to 9-11 is Kabbalah. Kabbalah is uh, an ancient Semitic form of occultism. Uh, Judaism takes some of its roots from Kabbalah, and uh, this is the main symbolic um, structure or this main symbolic icon of Kabbalism it is known as the Sephirotic Tree of Life. This is known as the ladder to God. Okay, the, the levels that go up in consciousness to God, and uh, there are ten of these spheres on the tree. If you count them, there are ten total. This is one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. They're known as these spheres are known as sephirot. So the ten sephirot are comprise the tree of life. Now, in the books that describe this symbol, the sephirotic tree, uh, they're, they're the, the Zohar and the Sefer Yetzirah. They uh, look at it as that there are only ten sephirot. There are not nine and there are not eleven. This is specifically worded into these books. To speak of there as being any more or less sephirot is considered like a blasphemy in Kabbalah because there are only ten. 
So this is where part of the name, the, the name of the ritual comes from. Not nine, not eleven, but yet we have the ritual happens on nine eleven. And we'll talk about the occult significances of the numerology as well when we explore that. But uh, in Kabbalah, 9 and 11 are considered blasphemies against the 10 sephirot, if you speak of there as being any less than 10 or any more than 10. And we also see that the symbolic numbers, the numbers of these buildings are symbolic when we relate the ritual to Kabbalah, because the buildings that came down were the the, the, the uh, Tower 1, which is the male tower, okay? it has a phallic symbol on top. This is Tower 1 in the, in the numbering system of the World Trade Center. The, the feminine tower is Tower number 2. And then this building is World Trade Center 7. So if we add them together, we get 1 plus 2 plus 7 and that equals 10. So we see there are 10 sephirot, the building numbers total 10. So they're bringing down the 10 in the buildings, and they're bringing down symbolically the 10 sephirot. You see, in the sephirot, there are three pillars, three columns. You have this left-hand path known as the path of severity. You have the right-hand path that is known as the path of mercy. Again, these are corollaries to the Freemasonic pillars. This would be the pillar of mercy, which is Joaquin. This is the pillar of severity, or Boaz. And then you have the path of mildness, or the path of will. Will to ascend in consciousness. This sphere representing base consciousness, and this sphere representing cosmic consciousness. Without going into very deep explanations of, of uh, what each sephiroth represents, just understand that this middle pillar is the synthesis between these two. This represents too much male aspect uh, or, or control. This could be too much uh, um, capitulation to control. You can look at it that way with this path being severity, this path, path being mercy. You could look at it as um, this path is not being a controller and also not being a slave. It is not being a dominator nor capitulating to domination. Therefore, the middle way, as it is called in Buddhism, uh, the, the unification of male and female, the chemical wedding. It is the ascension from base consciousness through connection with conscience, the heart chakra, and uh, attaining cosmic consciousness or higher level awareness, uh, represented as the crown uh, sephirot. See, if you collapse these in, right, if you, if you were to take these three levels and collapse them in right into the middle pillar to bring these dual aspect sephirot into one, you would see that this is really this really represents the chakra system, the seven chakras. You would have the base chakra, the the sacrum chakra. These two comprise the solar plexus chakra, the heart chakra. These two comprise the throat chakra. These two comprise the third eye chakra, and that comprises the crown chakra. So there's the seven chakras. All right, and we see that that would be on the middle pillar and it would contain seven chakras. And again, the middle pillar here is building seven. All correlates perfectly. Here are the chakras representing the seven planets. Up the middle pillar, the spinal column, the raising of the kundalini energy up the spine and to the top of the head. From uh, down here, it, uh, farthest out from the sun until we get up to the solar mind, and the earth being the heart chakra of the system, the earth and moon right in the middle. It's, it's, it, it would be the uh, fourth of the seven chakras, and that's what's ultimately being brought down.
the, the, the consciousness is being destroyed and leveled by the leveling of these of these towers. Okay, so that's Kabbalah. That's the Kabbalistic aspect of the destruction of the of the the uh, World Trade Center buildings, the three pillars of the World Trade Center. The second occultic tradition, tarot. We see again the columns of Joaquin and Boaz. Now, see, they're reversed in this example. They're the same way that the, uh, they are in the, uh, in the uh, Kabbalistic uh, Sephirotic Tree of Life. But this is the male pillar, the light pillar, the pillar of mercy. This is the male pillar because you're looking at the entrance of the temple. See, in the Freemasonic tracing board that we discussed, the, wall, the light pillar is on this side because you're on the outside of the temple walking in. In this example, you're, you're inside the temple looking toward the outside, and the goddess is seated in the temple, and she's veiled from the outside. So if you were to picture yourself walking in from behind her, right, and she's veiled, the, the, the uh, Joaquin pillar would be to your left. And that is the male pillar, and here we see the male pillar with the phallic symbol. The feminine pillar, see, it's on her right side. This one's on her left side. So you have the feminine pillar, which would represent Boaz. The masculine pillar here would represent Joaquin. The middle pillar represents the goddess. Again, it's a sacrifice of the goddess. Once again, we see it happen. Uh, here we see she's the moon goddess. She has the cross on her chest, the cross of the sun, you know, that she that she carries within, that she gives birth to. Um, here we see that the Sephirotic tree is behind her because Tarot, Kabbalah, Kabbalah and Freemasonry are uh, aspects are, are aspects of occultism that must be studied in conjunction with each other to fully understand them. The goddess holds the book of truth, the Torah, the law, the, the truth, and it is veiled by her cloak because no one knows how the, the story ends. The future is still to be written. So in ancient uh, goddess worship traditions, this goddess was known as Tara. T-A-R-A. -A. And this is why, as a result of this ritual, we have a war on terror. Terror. But, see, it's said, when it's said quickly, it, it morphs, and the word phonetically becomes terror. The war on terror. The war on the goddess. The war on the sacred feminine. The war on our emotional feminine aspect. To shut down conscience and to simply follow orders, to do whatever we are commanded to do, to simply follow orders without conscience being involved. The sacrifice of the goddess, care, conscience, the sacred feminine principle of the individual. So, Again, this middle pillar is the most important and is the synthesis between the male and feminine, masculine and feminine energies, the other two pillars. So the third pillar is the, 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 the principle of truth because another name for this goddess in Egyptian tradition was Taurt. And Taurt's name kind of phonetically morphed until it became Taruf. And this is where we get the word truth out of. Phonetically, the word truth comes from a derivation of this goddess's name. So she is the goddess of truth. Now this is why there is a 9-11 truth movement. Because they took too big of a chance in completing the ritual when no plane had hit it. See, a plane was more likely than not scheduled to hit that building, or something was scheduled to hit that building, whether you believe it's planes or any, whatever you believe actually struck or the force that was used to bring down those buildings to me is irrelevant. The buildings did disintegrate. They were brought down, okay? And, uh, 
whether you believe it's controlled demolition or even a more exotic technology is irrelevant as far as I'm concerned. The buildings were brought down and that's the main thing. And the, the, the middle pillar, which represents the goddess, it represents truth, it represents the path to higher consciousness, the unification of the masculine and feminine principles of consciousness within the individual, are being destroyed. Ritualistically, symbolically, we're destroying the sacred feminine. We're destroying care. We're destroying conscience. We're destroying consciousness. We're destroying truth. Okay, that's what the ritual is about. And that is why Building 7 had to be brought down. Something went awry in the plan. Whatever was supposed to happen physically to that building didn't happen when it was really scheduled to happen because clearly these buildings were wired with explosives well in advance of the actual ritual taking place because that, you know, explosions did happen from within the building and no one could have wired them on that day. So uh, something happened and they could not take it down as they wanted to, but they would not leave the pillar up because if they left it there, it would symbolically represent that the will still stands, the will to ascend in consciousness. It would symbolically represent that the truth still stands, that the goddess still stands. And they could not do that. They had to complete the symbolic interpretation of this mass ritual by bringing the middle pillar down even if nothing had appeared to strike it and that's why they brought it down at the end of the day. So that is the tarot uh, aspect of it and uh, how the goddess ties into it. It is a, uh, a symbolic um, uh, sacrifice of the sacred feminine of the goddess once again. 